famous bit of gaming history only exists because the programmer forgot to remove it. How did an unlicensed mod end up being the biggest video game of 1981? It's time to dive into gaming history and talk about 15 of the craziest behind the scenes stories about your favourite games. I'm Danger Dolan and today I will be your narrator. Number 15 Silent Hill is categorised by its thick fog which sets the tone and makes it difficult to see enemies until they're very close by. It's a key part of the story, but on the developer's side the fog also serves an important purpose. It hides the fact that the draw distance is extremely limited and the game can't load in backgrounds or new areas fast enough. Behind that fog wall is the game building itself and rendering the environment. Number 14 the Legend of Zelda was originally intended to be a sci-fi series. Each section of the Triforce was intended to be a sort of electronic chip, and Link was intended to travel back and forth through time. That's why they called him Link. He was the link between past and future. Also, the second quest for the original Legend of Zelda was the result of a mistake. Designer Takashi Tezuka accidentally took up only half of the game's memory with the game code, so Shigeru Miyamoto filled the second half with a brand new quest. Number 13. Much of the development of Space Invaders involved creating the custom hardware it needed to run on. No system was strong enough to handle the game as it was designed, so the system had to be built completely from scratch. And even that wasn't enough. The result was that the enemy spaceships couldn't move as fast as intended, and as a result they would speed up as the player eliminated them. Despite this being a hardware limitation, they decided to keep this as a core gameplay feature. Number 12 when Gradius was going through development, it was actually too hard for much of the development team to test it properly. To help them through it, they gave themselves a little back door. They could get a full set of power-ups by pressing up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, stop. It worked great, except, whoops, they might have forgotten to remove the little trick before the game was published. Maybe no one noticed? Number 11. Masahiro Sakurai, the creator and designer of Kirby, basically designed him by mistake. Kirby's original design was just a simple circle. He wasn't a character, he was just a placeholder graphic for a character that hadn't designed yet. But as development went on, Sakurai decided he actually liked the little circle placeholder. Gave him a few little details to make him into Kirby. Number 10. Metal Gear was a pioneer of the stealth genre, but it wasn't on purpose. Originally, Metal Gear was intended to be an arcade-style combat action game, the style of Ikari Warriors or Commando, for the Japan-only MX2 home console. The problem is, the original build of the game could only handle a small number of enemies or bullets on screen before the whole thing crashed. So Hideo Kojima designed Metal Gear around that limitation, making the game about avoiding enemies in combat, and the rest is history. Number 9. In 1995, Rockstar, then known as DMA Designs, was working on a relatively bland racing game called Race and Chase. Early beta testers hated it until they found a very special bug. The bug caused police cars to try running the player off the road. Testers had way more fun screwing around on the map with the police chasing them than they actually did the design missions. That's where the concept for Grand Theft Auto came from. Number 8. Lara Croft is gaming's first major sex symbol in the West, due largely to her famous set of gigantic polygonal boobs, but Tomb Raider's protagonist was never actually supposed to be that busty. The programming error turned what was supposed to be a bust size increase of 50% into an increase of 150%. Of course the change was unintended, but apparently none of the designers saw it as enough of a problem to change it. Number 7 the game widely credited with containing the first easter egg is Adventure for the Atari 2600, but it wasn't there because Atari wanted it to be. The game's sole creator and programmer hid the words created by Warren Robinett on the floor of one of the rooms because he knew Atari wouldn't credit him for his work. Atari coined the term easter egg for the discovery, said it was just a hidden reward. But that was basically just damage control. Number 6 because of the whole King Kong thing, it's easy to look at Donkey Kong and see the title character as the bad guy. He appears to have kidnapped some poor girl, and the player has to climb up to save her. But the story of the game originally is that Donkey Kong is Mario's, or Jumpman's, pet, and he's misbehaving because Jumpman isn't taking good enough care of him. Sort of explains the whole basis of Donkey Kong Jr. Number 5 In the year 2000, a project for a movie based on the Monkey Island games was quietly cancelled. The legendary LucasArts Adventures game had a screenplay already in the works, being written by Ted Elliott. Noted Monkey Island fan Steven Spielberg was even going to direct, but the project was cancelled, and a few years later, Ted Elliott was tapped to write a new movie, part to the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. So what do the movies and games have in common? Well, just a bumbling protagonist full of one-liners, politically important love interest, and a ghost pie antagonist with skeleton crew members. Coincidence? Number 4 It's not exactly coincidental that the two Zelda games on the 64, Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time, look pretty much identical. Majora's Mask reuses most of the assets from Ocarina of Time, making it the only Zelda game to lift most of its art from a previous game. 
The reason for that was that the Ocarina of Time was supposed to have a follow-up expansion code named Aura Zelda, but the development team protested the development of a simple expansion in exchange for not making Aura Zelda, they were challenged to make a full-blown sequel within one year. The result was Majora's Mask, made in a short time by cutting corners and using the same engine and assets in a completely remixed way. Number 3. Crazy Otto is one of the most successful early examples of a game mod. A couple of programmers cracked open a game of Pac-Man, made some modifications to the code and the hardware, and made their own game, Crazy Otto, which was still pretty much just a modded version of Pac-Man except that Pac-Man has legs. Midway found out about Crazy Otto, but realized the game was actually pretty good. So they paid the programmers for the rights to the game, gave Pac-Man a bow, and called the new one, Miss Pac-Man. Number 2. Pong is popularly known as the first video game, but it's not even close. In fact, Atari founder Nolan Bushnell didn't even come up with the idea himself. He released his prototype of Pong shortly after attending a Magnavox presentation of Table Tennis, one of the flagship games on the Odyssey. Magnavox sued Atari over the infringement and won, so Atari ended up having to pay Magnavox a licensing fee for Pong. Number 1. Mario is one of the most recognisable fictional characters in the world today. The hat, the moustache, the suspenders, they're all iconic. And all of those things were added just to make Mario's original character model work with the game. The cap was added to reduce the number of pixels needed for his hair and to prevent designers from having to animate it. The moustache and big nose were only there to give his face some definition. It would simply be a shapeless blob of pink without them. And his model wasn't big enough to add a mouth. And his signature suspenders were designed to help his arms stand out against the rest of his body. What? Danger Dawn, did you know that we have a countdown book featuring some of our best scripts on sale now? Links down below for the physical and ebook versions. That is it for this countdown. Have a good one! <laughs>